We began by sharing from Psalm 145 verse 4, where it says, One generation shall praise your works to another. And we were speaking of how generations are the life source of every nation, and more so the holy nation. When we look at the book of Genesis chapter 6, there's a man by the name of Noah. And Noah was living amongst a wicked generation. When you read Noah chapter 6, you'll find that Noah was living amongst these people who were wicked. And every intent of the thoughts of their hearts was evil continually. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. In the midst of a wicked generation, Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. He lived in a rebellious culture, an evil company, but he was a just and perfect man who obeyed God's word and emerged as a grace generation. So in the evil generation, there is a grace generation. Say amen. That's what you must be. You must be the grace generation in and amongst the evil company. Moses was the same. Moses lived amongst a rebellious people, a crooked and perverse people, but he built a tabernacle. He built by divine design. He built in humility and God was able to use him mightily. So Noah is a man who finds grace, but he builds a structure that represents Christ. Same with Moses, rebellious people, but he finds grace. All of us that I share today, we find ourselves in the same situation, evil, wicked. But it is our duty to build structures that represent the person of Christ. Everything that you build in your home, in your family, must be a representation of the person of Christ. Noah was impervious. He was impenetrable. The, the spirit of the age in Noah's time could not penetrate him. That's why he built an impenetrable structure. So you've got to be building these things into your life and into your DNA. The Bible will tell us uh, that uh, Moses, the Bible says in De- Deuteronomy 32, the people corrupted themselves. They are not his children. Because of their blemish, they are a perverse and a crooked generation. These are the things that took place during Moses' time. But the spirit of the age comes to us in many different forms. It comes to us to, through media, through music, through politics. Every age of time is determined by these things. You cannot tell me that the, or the, the elections that are going to take place in America are not going to affect us. The spirit of the age comes upon us in Generation X, You look at Margaret Thatcher, you look at the Cold War, this was Generation X, the Vietnamese War, all these things like apartheid affected the way people lived on the earth. Then you had the Generation Ys, and these were people that were between the, uh, born between the age of 1980 and the year 2000. We, We were introduced to cell phones, to technology, and then you had the Gen Z. Now, the Gen Z is online 24-7. Let me tell you what happened in Kenya a few weeks ago. All the young people in Kenya, uh, in the capital city, protested against the government. And the government was going to sign certain laws into place. Because of the protest, they stopped it. So Generation Z is affected by Facebook, by Twitter, by Instagram. They have their CVs on LinkedIn. Nowadays we don't, we don't, they don't just print it. It's all there for everyone to see. They love traveling. So this is all affecting the way we are in the earth. But let me say this to you today. I want to read a verse to you. Ephesians 2 1 says, you who, you he made alive, who were dead in trespasses and sins, in which you once walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit who now works in the sons of disobedience. Right now, the prince of the power of the air, he is at work and he determines the spirit of the age. Listen carefully, sons of God, within every generation, the spirit of the age is released. It is released to tempt, to seduce, to capture, and to control the sons of light. You are the sons of light, not the sons of the night. And as the sons of light, I pray today, your eyes will be open to know the spirit of the age when it seeks to capture you. 
You know how to put your structures in place. We do not wrestle against flesh and blood. Ephesians 6.12 But against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age. Of this age. Behind everything happening. Behind everything happening right now at the forefront. Behind the scenes. There is the rulers of the darkness of this age. There was a man in the Bible. His name was Demas. And Demas was very close to Paul. But he got captured by the spirit of the age. Let me show you how to preserve the seed of Christ in your children. Let's go for it. The Lord Jesus was grown up in Galilee. But the parents were obedient to the angel of God. They were surrounded by shepherds and wise men. There was prophetic grace. They fulfilled the law. They were consistently in the corporate environment. Mary kept the end in mind. And Jesus was brought up in a submissive culture. He was in Galilee. He was in the world. But he was not of the world. You need to know how. Parents, let me just, let me just have a parenting workshop for a short while. You determine what your children become. I will say that again. Very few children break out of what has been crafted from their homes. Most often, children take up after their parents. If your father was a pastor, all likelihood, I, I see it more and more and more with our kids. If you are not keeping the end in mind, if you are not consistent in a corporate environment, you're going to see the spirit of the age take your children out. Because it comes to seduce them, it sows in them suicidal thoughts. And before you know it, they are no more part of the kingdom of God. How do you overcome the spirit of the age? Number one, the gene of the word. Having been born again, not of corruptible seed, but incorruptible through the word of God, which lives, abides forever. You have to have a relationship with God's word. Let me, let me say this to you. God's word must be of paramount importance to you. If you don't have the gene of God's word, you will fail. I, I'm saying that to you today. You will fall. Because what is going to keep me from falling? It's the lamp. It is the light. It, what is going to keep me from stumbling? It, it's the word of God every day. If you feel sad and depressed, let me give you an example. And you can't sleep at night. Take your Bible. Leave your phone aside. Go to the quiet place in your house. Open the scriptures and just read a few psalms. Watch what happens. You read maybe five psalms. You might think nothing happened. But God's word suddenly was brought into your mind and into your dark area. And suddenly that seed will bear fruit. You might fall off to sleep even reading it. But read it anyway. Develop a relationship. Let that word grow in you. Number one is the gene of the word of God. Parents. Don't let your children determine what you do in your house. Let the word of God determine what happens in your house. Do not let the tail wag the dog. You, you might not have a PhD in astrophysics. You might not even have metric. But if God made you the parent, be the parent. Start being the parent. A lot of parents are compromising because he got LLB, LLM. Lawyer, this fellow. Let the gene of the word determine how things function in your house. Call your children out. Call your children out. Children, your mom and dad have every right, according to the scriptures, to call you out and align you back to the word of God. Let the word of God in your house read it out. No, children, what do you want to do now? You want to go there, okay? Let's see what the Bible says. Find the verse and speak to them. Tell them stories about people like Jonah. Tell them stories about people like Daniel and Joseph. Talk to them about David. Let the word start teaching them about what the word of God can do. Next thing, if you're going to see you overcome the spirit of the age, you must be established in covenant. Everybody say with me covenant. Covenant. That's, that's a great, great thing to say. When you're a covenantal person, God always shows up in your life. Like the three men in the fire, the fourth man shows up because you are of a covenantal uh, pedigree. And a covenantal stock. All over the earth right now, God is looking for covenantal people. When God sees himself in us, he shows up. Amen? 
Now the next thing today and I want to talk about this is we must have navigational skills navigational skills to live in this world as the sons of God we must have navigational skill this generation must know how to be wise as serpents and harmless as doves you must know how to be the leaven in the three measures of meal you must know how to work from inside out david knew how to act sometimes he acted like a madman you must know how to live amongst your enemies jesus knew how to live amongst sinners publicans tax collectors pharisees scribes people of influence you must have navigational skills everybody say with me navigational skills let me put it to you in another terms you must be street wise must be street smart so when you go to places people know that hey this guy here he knows how to move and to navigate on the earth when you read revelation chapter 4 it says to us before the throne there was a sea of glass like crystal and in the midst of the throne and around the throne were four living creatures full of eyes in the front and in the back the first living creature was like a lion the second living creature like a calf the third like the face of a man and the fourth living creature was that of a flying eagle you've got the lion you've got the man you've got the eagle and you've got the lamb are you seeing it write those words down lion man eagle what we need as a sons of god to navigate in the earth right now are these four character traits the four living creatures what sound do the lions make the lions roar speaks of his authority there are times when you need to know how to roar like a lion so when jesus went into the temple and he saw things were not in order he began to roar like a lion when people are infringing on our right to worship the roar must come out don't remain silent don't remain silent secondly you must know how to be like the lamb the lamb is sacrificial if you're going to survive in this time we have to be sacrificial living our lives for the benefit of others we've got so much but so unlamb like unlamb like what are we sacrificing the spirit of the age has captured us make sure you keep your lamb likeness let me say that again make sure you keep your lamb likeness because the spirit of the age makes you feel like you've got nothing come on sons of god don't lose your lamb likeness you know what a lamb does it lives for the benefit of another everything that it has will be sacrificially placed on an altar this is the lord jesus and if he is in your genes if you have his genes in you if his blood is flowing through you you will be like the lamb what the spirit of the age teaches us oh you worked hard you must enjoy it now me myself and i no it's no problem you'll enjoy it but as a son of god you must maintain your lamb likeness your lion man then it's a very important one the man the man is reasonable everybody say reasonable in in law we do what is called the reasonable man test the reasonable man test so if if you have to drive into someone we'll have to ask you what would the reasonable man have done on the road at that time at that speed the face of the man is for us to reason with one another the the face of a man listen to me very carefully is for you to be reasonable so you can intelligently represent the image of god say it again you must intelligently represent the image of god children all your children when you go to school intelligence is not a bad thing you must intelligently like daniel represent the image of god and lastly you must be like the eagle oh the eagle soars in the wind it's led by the spirit this is what you need this is the fourfold grace that you need to be equipped with to function in the earth this is my covenant which you shall keep between me and you and your descendants every male among you shall be circumcised you shall circumcise in the flesh of your foreskins and it shall be the sign of the covenant between me and you he who is 8 days old among you shall be circumcised every male child 
in your generation. Say with me the eighth day. The eighth day speaks of new beginnings. New beginnings. New beginnings. And God is full of new things. Eight people went into the ark. It was a new beginning for Noah and his family. Generations are always introduced to new things. Fashion, technology, media, vocabulary. I don't even know some of the slangs right now. In God, there is nothing new. But to us, what God is doing now is new, even though it has always been in him. So Ecclesiastes 1.4 says, go back, one generation passes away, another generation comes, but the earth abides forever. So we need eighth day people who can bring about new things. We must have a generation that releases newness, freshness, the life, the Zoe life that comes from God and not from this world. Guys, the next verse is very important, found in Acts 17 and verse 19. And they took him, Paul, and brought him to Aeropagus, saying, May we know what, is the, or what this new doctrine is of which you speak. It is always there, but you need someone to un, unwrap it. So there are new things in God. Guys, we need you to come up with new things. New things. Those of you who are here, think about starting a new business. Colonel Sanders did it. You think Colonel Sanders' great-grandchildren or great-great-grandchildren are having a a problem with what they're going to do tomorrow, uh, where they're going to pay the rent from? Step out because you have in you new life. You are part of a new creation. So you need to go and do new things. New things. Look for all the opportunities. When you are going out today, look for the opportunity. Say, Lord, give me the eyes to see where I can go, what I can do. Now I want to talk to you about a very important thing. Very, very important thing. The Bible says, the Bible says, God made a covenant with Noah and perpetual generations after the flood. And you're going to This is the sign of the covenant which I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you for perpetual generations. I set my rainbow in the cloud. It shall be a sign of the covenant between me and you. A rainbow is formed through reflection, refraction, and the dispersion of light at a 42 degree angle. How many colors are there in the rainbow? Seven colors are in the rainbow. God placed the rainbow in the sky. Not on the earth. The rainbow is in the sky. And it was a sign of the covenant that he made with Noah never to flood the earth again. Now Jesus is our faithful witness in the sky. But we need a faithful generation on the earth to represent him. It's called the 42nd generation. You must build a generation on the earth that can reflect, 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 refract, And disperse the light of Christ. You must have a generation that can reflect, refract, and disperse the light of Christ. I'm going to show you now how to do it. During my reflections yesterday, I had a chance to think about what is missing in the church today. And I came to the understanding that we have all the knowledge, we have resource, but somehow we have a shortage of the anointing. We have a short... Listen to me very carefully, guys. Listen to me very, very carefully. Jesus was handed the book. He opened the book. He found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because He has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. And He goes on to say all the things that the anointing does. Brothers and sisters, the anointing is available. We need to find a way We need to hunger, we need to thirst, we need to ask, we need to seek, we need to knock until all, all oils are available to us. You as a son of God, you must say, Lord, I want the anointing. If you're an, if you're an anointed, uh, if you have the anointing, come on, that anointing will just take you from average and mediocre and bring you up to great excellence. We grew up in Pentecostal church, the buzzword was anointing. 
It was there. People didn't have money, but somehow God was working in them. The church was growing. You saw the people growing. What was the difference that separated people? It was the anointing. The anointing. Uh, every generation must understand the secrets of the anointing. It will bring a change to their generation. Jesus understood this very important aspect of the effect of the anointing in his generation. You must know, I, I shared with you previously, how he lived in Galilee, a highly cosmopolitan area where there were so many wicked things happening. The Romans were there. All the people were moving in and out of this bustling town, but he knew how to keep himself. It was the anointing. So today I want you to trust God. I want you to trust God for the anointing. When the anointing comes upon you and you go to work tomorrow, something happens that's very different. This is the Holy Spirit working in you to will and to do. When you go to school, it's going to be very different because you've got the anointing upon your life. The Spirit of the Lord will be upon you. You will be able to do things that others have never done. Say amen. We need a greater measure of the anointing. In John chapter 7... Verse 53, it's the last verse of John 7. It says this, everyone went to his own house. John 7, 53. But Jesus went, verse eight, chapter 8, verse 1. But Jesus went to the Mount of Olives. Everyone goes to their own house, but Jesus goes to the Mount of Olives. The Mount of Olives, chapter 8, verse 1. The Mount of Olives was the place of crushing. It was the Garden of Gethsemane. And the olive tree uh, would give you olive oil. And this was a symbol of the anointing. The anointing is used or was used for illumination. Brothers and sisters, today we're going to check our oil levels. You, know, you go to the garage and say, hey, you check your oil and water. We're going to check out our oil levels. Because I feel that if we have all the measures of the anointing, something different can happen in our lives. Something very different can happen. Psalm 23, David saying, You prepare a table for me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. Watch what happens. You anoint my head with oil, my cup runs over. You anoint my head with oil, my cup runs over. In Exodus, in Exodus 25, it says, Oil for the light and spices for the anointing and for the sweet incense. There are many, many types of oil. Many types of oil. You've got fragrant oil. Fragrant oil is the oil that can change atmospheres. So when you break the alabaster box, the fragrance fills the room. How many of you know we need that to happen in our lives? When you walk into a place, they must know, here comes the Son of God. It changes the atmosphere. You have the, um, the pillar oil. Very important is the pillar oil. In Genesis 28, this is what, what Jacob did. He poured the oil on the pillar. Poured the oil on the pillar. We need more pillars in the house of God. If you're going to take nations and cities, you need more pillars. When you come here in the, on a Sunday morning, there are pillars outside. There's steel inside those pillars. There's a lot of stuff that went in there, concrete. We don't come looking for the pillar. When you go to Cape Town, you're not looking for Table Mountain. Suddenly, this didn't disappear to Kimberley. You must have the pillar anointing. Listen to me. As a spouse, as a spouse, you need pillar anointing to be faithful to your spouse. You need pillar anointing to be faithful to your employer. Pillar anointing to be faithful to God. You need, listen to me, this is a very important oil. This is called pressed oil or crushed oil. Let me engage from my learned colleague here. Exodus 27 verse 20. How many of you went through some crushings in your life? Crushing, crushing. And you shall command the children of Israel that they bring you pure oil of pressed olives for the light to cause the lamp to burn continually. Bring you pure oil of pressed olives. When you are being crushed, when you are being crushed, it produces a pure oil that brings light into the temple. Some of you have been crushed and you're wondering, God, why? But do you know you have a special job that will bring light to certain places that no one else can? It's called pressed oil. You need pressed oil. You need excellent oil. All the children that go to school, you need excellent oil. And you get excellent oil when the righteous smites you. You need golden oil. The golden oil is the finishing oil. A lot of people start, but they don't finish. We need holy oil. You know, when we were growing up in, ch in church, holy oil was a big thing. And I shared with you how, me personally, I had a very big phobia for nightclubs. Give me a, give me a, how do we put that in words, English? Clubby phobia. 
Because I would always think if Jesus came tonight, what will happen? Where will I spend my eternity? But in the Pentecostal season, the anointing brought upon God's people a holy reverential fear of the Lord. I want you to know today some things we can preach But when the Spirit of the Lord comes upon you, He's not just the Spirit, He's called the Holy Spirit. That means the word holy means to be separated, consecrated, dedicated, reserved for a singular purpose. We won't need to be preaching to our young people about what is holy, what is unholy, what you touch, what you don't touch, what you drink, what you don't drink. It'll just, the anointing does that. It's called holy oil. Let me show you about the anointing, what it does to your life. What does anointing do? Take this down. And try and memorize this week what the anointing does. The anointing firstly adorns the believer. It makes you look good. In Luke 15, the woman lost one coin and it was a picture of the Holy Spirit. So she had to do certain things. She had to go, uh, one, she lost one of those ten coins and she had to go and sweep the house. She had to clean things up because she wanted to find that one coin. You must know when you've got the anointing, you will look good. It will make you look good. Say amen. Say with me, adorns. The second thing the anointing will do, the anointing nourishes you in the inner man. It nourishes you in the inner man. Ephesians 3.16 says that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might in the inner man by the Holy Spirit. To be strengthened with might in the inner man. How many of you go through depressing thoughts? Sometimes you feel like, God, I can't make it. But when the anointing comes upon you, it nourishes you on the inside. One of the things that the Holy Spirit does is it helps you to overcome. Overcome. You are not meant to be a survivor. You are an overcomer. You overcome Satan. You overcome the world. Come on, you overcome the flesh. Why why are people giving into their fleshly indulgences? There's an anointing oil deficiency. Today you've come to a dietitian. And the dietitian is showing you what is deficient. It's called vitamin anointing. The Holy Spirit helps you overcome Satan. I want us to know today, listen to me very carefully. Satan, in Zechariah chapter 12, listen to me carefully. Satan was withstanding Joshua when they were wanting to do uh, rebuild the, te- the temple. And, 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 and Satan was behind the scenes at work. A lot of the time, there are a lot of demonic influences. And I'm not a demon-centric person. But I can tell you, we are hitting a wall and we are bouncing back. We are hitting a wall and we are bouncing back. But when you have the anointing, you will have the strength to overcome. In fact, you will have the wisdom to know uh, to, uh, what things Satan is doing. What does the anointing do? It imparts power. Power. Power firstly to witness, power to do good. When you don't have the anointing, you are powerless. Ask Samson, he didn't have the anointing, he was powerless. You need power. The next thing the anointing does is the anointing nurtures you, nurtures you. 1 John 2.20 says, but you have an unction from the Holy One. But the anointing which you have received uh, of him abides in you. That you, you need not any man teach you. But the same anointing teaches you all things. So you need the anointing to nurture you. You know, like when I went to Kenya, I had, I had no clue who I was preaching to. At that moment, I just said, Holy Spirit, now you come and help me. To, and he's going to help you. Children, we need the Holy Spirit to nurture you, to grow you. Now here's a big one. The anointing can bring you temporal blessings. The anointing can... How many of you want some temporal blessings? Come on. Temporal blessings. No, only Nolan, how many of you are trusting God, come on, for some big things? Big things. No, guys, come on, you must think about these things. We need some temporal blessings, not to consume it on our own lust, but for the kingdom of God. In Numbers 18, this is what it says, Numbers 18, verse number 8. I want to show you what took place because of the anointing. A lot of people are chasing the temporal blessings, but they don't know that the anointing can bring it to you. The Lord spoke to Aaron. Here I myself have also given you charge of my heave offerings, all the holy gifts of the children of Israel. I have given them as a portion to you and your son, as an ordinance forever. Am I I reading the right verse? Numbers 18.8. That is it. Okay, let me read it to you from, from the old King James. The Lord spoke to Aaron, Behold, I have also given you the charge of the heave offerings, hallowed things, unto thee I have given them by reason of the anointing. By reason of the anointing. Aaron received temporal blessings because of 
the anointing. God will give you some great things. I don't want anyone in this church to be poor. I say that again today. I don't want anybody in this church to be poor. Because tomorrow, if we need to get into a plane and go to a place called Suriname, which many of you have not heard of, or a place called Guyana, and we need to preach the gospel, there must be no lack anywhere to preach it. The anointing must come. The anointing also does something very important. It identifies the believer with Christ. But here's the big thing. When you got the anointing, there's a word, it's called narcosis. Everybody say with me, narcosis. Say with me, narcosis. One of the ingredients of the anointing was myrrh. And myrrh it was able to, to bring healing and strength. In the time of pain, it is able to do that. It is a preservative, but it is seen as the sustaining power of the Holy Spirit. The anointing can relieve your pain in times of trials and tribulations. And it gives you the power to overcome it. Everyone say with me, narcosis. How many of you go through tough times in life? Oh, but when you got the anointing, this is our fight, my battle. This is our fight, my battle. Take the word out, you read it. Suddenly you find the weight is lifting. The oil, the oil, as the oil levels are rising, you are, you are overcoming. You are overcoming. You are overcoming. You are overcoming. This is what I pray over you today. As, as you access measures of the anointing, you will see some things happen in your life. Lord, how did I, you look back over your shoulder and you say, how did I overcome that? How did I come past that? It was the Spirit of the Lord. Lastly, the Holy Spirit and the anointing must glorify Christ. Amen. He shall glorify me, John sixteen fourteen, for he shall receive of mine and he shall show it to you. This is not for us to put on display how great we are. The anointing must come to glorify Christ. I think we've got to check our oil levels today. How many of you want a greater, greater measure of the anointing? I want the anointing to settle upon me. You know, you, you know why? You know what, what the anointing can do? It can nurture me to be a good father. You know what the anointing can do? It can make you stand out in your family. Because the Lord will bring you things. He will bring you things that, that are unprecedented. He will give you ideas how to grow your business. It will take you to another place in God. Get the anointing. It will keep you. It will preserve you. The holy oil upon you will keep you away from evil. 